Welcome to part 12 of the Intermediate Revit course, where we're going to start looking at placing and creating curtains in this interior view. If you'd like to get access to all of the course files, materials and resources, as well as four hours of ad-free content, you can feel free to check out the full course on my website. I'll see you there. Looking at this render, you can see that there are still a few details that we can add to our model. At the moment, it's still looking like there's missing something. And I think what that is, obviously the greenery outside, which we will get to, the fact that this is all open is making it look a lot more open and a lot more empty. But you can see that there are actually curtains on these back walls and there are little drop down curtains here as well if that's what you want to call them. So I think once we model in these bigger curtains, this is going to look really nice. And this is something that can be a bit tricky, but something worth learning for Revit because you're going to be using curtains quite a lot and they do really make your renders look nice. So let's find out how to create these curtains on this back wall. So let's go back to Revit. The first thing we're going to do is go to our, uh, let's go to the ground floor plan. We want to show a section of this back wall uh, facing where these doors are so that we can put in these curtains. So I'm going to just create a section there, right click it and go to view. This is going to open up that section. I'm just going to double click VV again or press VV and then we're going to turn off some of these uh, levels and stuff because we don't need them and they should be under annotation categories. If we type levels, we can turn that off. All right, so that's just going to make it a bit easier to see what's going on. We don't need to see anything like this. In fact, we can turn off the topography as well like we did earlier. Turn that off, bring this up. So here we've got our two doors and there's going to be curtains that go over this left door and then also this right door. And you can see that the rails for these curtains, they only cover those doors. So there's going to be a rail that goes across this whole first left door and the whole far right door. All right, so let's put that in. To create these rails, you're not going to be using the railing tool. The easy way to do this is we're going to go to the massing and sight tab and we're going to place an in-place mass. You can name this curtains and click OK. You can see that this looks a little bit different from before. What we're going to be doing is first creating the rail and we're going to use um, model lines to create this railing. And then for the curtains, we're also going to use model lines and we're going to be converting them to masses. And that might sound a little bit confusing at the moment. Follow along, this is going to be really super easy. All right, so the first thing we want to do is set up some reference planes. Just like creating family-based models, we're going to start off by using reference planes. So we want to create a reference plane for the top where the railing sits. So let's go ahead and put that in. You can see that it's slightly above the door there. So that will be from around about here. And then we're going to place another one randomly in the middle and then one for the bottom where the, the lowest bit of the curtain sits. And you can see that it's just off the floor. So let's just create one that is just off the floor. There we go. And what we're going to do is press DI and we're going to create dimensions between all of these reference planes so that we can make them equal. So now that's definitely sitting in the middle. What we need to do is name these so that we can refer to them when we're setting a work plane. So I'm going to click on the, the top reference plane. I'm going to call this top. I'm going to click on the middle reference plane and call this middle. And then I'm going to click on the bottom one and call this bottom. To be able to see the model lines in this floor plan, you'll have to turn on mass under your visibility and graphics settings. So if I double press V, visibility graphic override settings turn up and we can scroll down or type M to find where mass is and you're going to see on default that it's unticked. If we check this on because you're going to see that this comes with all of the massing options as well, all of the functions of massing. If we turn this back on, we'll then be able to see model lines. So I'm going to make a model line and you can see that the shortcut for this is LI or it's up here. If we click on that, what we can do is draw in a rectangle for the railing. So I'm going to do one side first and then we can copy that over to the other side. So the railing is going to sit just off the wall. You can see that it just hangs off the wall like that. So it's stuck out from the wall a little bit. This is the wall here, I believe. And before we place anything, we want to change the, the placement plane. We want to make this the top reference plane that we set up before. And you can see that that is down here using the placement plane drop down menu. So let's go ahead and press that. And now what we can do is draw in the overall shape of the railing. And that's just going to go across from one side to the other to cover this whole door. If we go to a 3D view, you can see where those reference planes are. I'm just gonna go back here and highlight it so you can see them. So I'm gonna go back to that 3D view. 
you can see the model lines are currently sitting here and you can't actually see them here. But if we go create form, you can see this little extrusion bit shows up. The reason why we can't see the model lines is because they're, they're turned off for the visual uh, graphic settings for the 3D view because this is independent from the plan settings. So once we've created these model lines into a form, we can extrude them. And now you can sort of see the shape of what this railing is going to look like. So I'm just going to bring this up roughly to the shape of the railing. You know, that was probably a bit too thick. So what we can do is bring that down a bit. Just gonna zoom in to make this a little bit easier. There we go, we've got a rectangular railing. And what we can also do is change the material of this to some kind of metal because that's what it is in these images here. This is going to be some kind of metal. So I'm just gonna type in metal. There we go, we can use aluminum, aluminum, whatever you call it. And we're just gonna set that for the railing material. All right, so now that the railing's in place, we can actually model in the proper curtain, which is the exciting part because this is going to look quite good. If we go back to the site plan, so now we can see where that railing is, we're going to actually create um, more model lines in this same mass. Um, so we haven't finished the mass yet, we're still going to create model lines for the curtains. So if we click model line, what you wanna make sure is that you're drawing on the work plane and not a face. If you click draw on face, you're going to be selecting some of these lines that pop up and you'll be drawing all over the place. Keep it to work plane and we're going to keep that work plane to the top reference plane at the moment. And what we're going to be doing is using the spline through points drawing tool, probably a bit easier than the spline tool. So we're going to use this. And what we're going to do is draw the overall shape of the curtain. So if we just select, try not to lock onto anything and we're just gonna draw in some lines and we're gonna make these a little bit wider now. And these are gonna go over the whole way until the end of the railing. All right, so now what we're going to do, if we go to a 3D view, you can see it's modeled in that shape um, for the top curtain bit. And we're going to create another line on the middle and then we're gonna connect those points to give it a wave. That might be a bit confusing now, but if you just follow what I do, it's gonna make a lot of sense once it's finished. So I'm going to go ahead and create another spline through points and I'm going to choose the reference plane as the middle reference plane that we set up earlier. So now I'm going to draw this in mirroring what we did on the top floor or the top reference plane. You can see I'm just mirroring it and going to the opposite side. And if we just draw this along, it doesn't have to be too perfect. You'll see that once we're finished. So now we wanna do one more spline through points and we're gonna do this on the bottom reference plane that we set up earlier. And this can be, um, you know, just about anywhere. This is going to be pretty random. As long as you're doing it on roughly the same horizontal axis, it'll be fine. And they can be just in random points around the place. It'll sort itself out. If we um, draw that in and finish that up in the middle, hit the escape key. What we can do is move some of these points in just so they're in line because that'll look a bit neater then. All right, so now what we can see in our 3D view is we've got some model lines from the top of the railing to the middle to the bottom. And this, once we connect them, is going to give that curtain shape. You can select all three of them. I'm just gonna hold control and select those model lines. I'm gonna hit create form and this should create that curtain form, which is quite organic. So then the last thing to do with this curtain is to change the material of it. Cause at the moment you can see it's quite see-through, which is not really what we wanted. Just gonna try select this in the 3D view. Just gonna hit tab until we select it. There we go. I'm gonna change the material of this to some kind of fabric. I'm gonna scroll down and you can see that this is some kind of white fabric. And so this one here looks pretty good. Let's add this in and we can see if this is what we were after. I'm going to finish this and have a look at it in Enscape because that doesn't necessarily show us what it's gonna look like in the render. You can see that it needs a little bit of adjustment, but, but for the most part, that looks really good. So what I'm going to do is copy that family or that in place mass over to the other side. I might try and curve up the actual vertical lines of this because it looks a little bit too straight and not so much organic, which is what we want. So we can change that up as well before we copy it over. Go back to Revit, edit in place. The reason why it looks so straight is because these points are all together on the end. So I'm just gonna move a few of them over. Click that green tick. Gonna go to the other side and do the same thing. So I've just edited the mass, clicked edit profile for one of these, and I can move it over. So this one can come out probably come in a bit, click that green tick, edit the profile again for this one. Then this can just come out a bit and move this one in 
This should make it look a little bit more organic. If we go back to the endscape, we can have a look at that. So there we go, let's create a bit of a curve on it. So what I'm going to do is edit the in place mass, go back to the site plan view. And what we're gonna do is just select all of this and copy it over. Just gonna move this to the other side and this will be the exact same mass on the other side. So it might look a little bit strange, but we can edit those points if we wanted to. If we have a look at this from the outside as well, that looks really nice. In the next lesson, we're gonna start looking at how to create a fur rug or carpet inside of Revit. If you'd like to get access to all of the course files, materials and resources, as well as four hours of ad-free content, you can feel free to check out the full course on my website. I'll see you there.